Welcome to the night Landscape, Landscape Podcast We are talking, talking photography We are showing, showing pictures My background is very much in like the post-modern child. I was born in 1986, so I've grown up like in the late 80s and especially the 90s and, and start uh, zeros. Where we just got a lot of like epic movies, the Sword and Sandals, Lord of the Rings, Gladiator and all that stuff. The big blockbuster movies also came out. That has kind of like shaped my childhood. So obviously over time, that is something that you can see represented in my, in my photography. Scandinavian minimalist art in the back of my head too with my yeah with my minimalists very much had this romantic feeling for a landscape where I did not want to have human elements in there it should just be like the clean landscape I just found out that having a person in there just gave so much more to the photo and it just helped so much more convey vastness and and how big nature actually is compared to us small puny humans the scale but also gives that adventure feeling to the photos good evening guys thanks again for watching another landscape lenscast podcast uh we here tonight the usual suspects on the left hand side we've got darren muirhouse uh, ginger captures and on the right hand side of me i've got uh, doug millen below me i've got alistair mcdonald of accessible photography and on the left of Alistair, we've got uh, Louise Welcome of Louise Welcome Photography all on YouTube. Now, there's a word you're going to hear tonight that will be abused quite a lot, and it's called epic, because the work you're <laughs> going to see tonight, this man, is epic. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce you to Maz uh, Peter Everson. And Maz, of course, uh, he's a full-time photographer. Uh, of course, Maz is from De Denmark, is a landscape photographer who has worked in the field since 2011 and has been, of course, a full-time photographer since 2016. He has a, his master's degree in uh, educational philosophy and uh, a former school teacher. And uh, Maz's interest, of course, in photography is primarily focused in fine art, landscape photography. And he also, of course, produced, uh, instru yeah, and produces instructional video videos for you to watch and help you on your journey to become a good photographer. And Maz, of course, uh, of course, his videos on the subject is off mainly of vista shots, um, subtle shots, regards to picking out detail and images, landscapes of Atlantic countries such as Iceland, Faroe Islands, uh, serene forests, and open countryside of countries like Denmark, where he comes from, and also the British Isles, where we are. So Maz works covers our various landscapes from epic vistas to serene forests and atmospheric night scenes, also like epic night scenes, of course, of, uh, you know, nighttime photography, etc. So it allows me to introduce this man to the podcast, and I just want to give a big warm welcome to Maz. Maz, thanks again for coming on to Landscape Podcast. How are you doing tonight? Thank you so much. I'm doing well. I've been working the entire day on my next epic video. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> yes, we did see that one. Oh, I did see that one, actually. I was, I was watching it last night, enjoyed it so much. I did want to keep it till for actual be actually done an interview of you to keep it fresh in my head because uh, I do watch your videos uh, weekly as well. Uh, so you yeah, so it was a, quite a adventure. And of course, tell me, of course, you, in regards to that video you mentioned, of course, it was two years since you actually got the chance to revisit Atlantica, and of course, the last time you were COVID and you had to, you know, um, shield yourself for a bit. How good did it feel just to get there? Well, obviously, it was really nice to finally get there because uh, Nigel, me, and James, we have been talking about it since 2019. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it takes a couple of years to like get all these things in order and make, make sure it works. And after the 2022 uh, disappointment of me not going, yeah. uh, we mm -hmm. decided that because we had quite a lot of cancellations due to COVID back then, 
we knew that there was probably an interest for 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 those people to come on this trip here instead. So yeah. we decided to to do a 2024. So I could, yeah, <laughs> get back. <laughs> nice. So yeah, of course. Uh, we, so we're going to actually ask you a few questions now. One of the things we always ask on the podcast is mainly getting back to the the passion. Where did you kindle the passion from? Where did it Where did it come from? Is it from your family? Was it from just um, mainly just uh, your media itself? Where, where did the passion come from for photography itself? So how long do we have? Uh, <laughs> you can have. You can have as long oh, as you want. <laughs> All right. Um, oh. Uh, the, the the fast version was that I actually did not start with photography. I started in videography uh, oh, and I kind of came into photography through videography because I had done like uh, my own fan trailers to big movies that from yeah. there, the epic thing comes from. Uh, and through that, because I was a gymnast, I also enjoyed like filming gymnastic tricks and jumps and all that in especially slow motion. So when the uh, Canon 550D came out and it had uh, 60 frames a second video, I could film slow motion. Uh, and from there, it was just obvious to try and look into what a 550D could do with photography. And then I learned yeah. about raw photos and the rest is history from there. Absolutely great. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, one of the things, of course, were your, your, your videos and of course your, your work as well. It's just um, so epic. Obviously, the Vista shots, the the minimalist things you put in. You know, you get a big, massive Vista, and you have a maybe a, a subject like Nigel dancing, for example, in a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's, it, it's it's funny with with the the photography that I do because my background. Uh, I don't remember if you read up that part, but my background is very much in like the post-modern child. I was born in 1986, so I've grown up like in the late 80s and especially the 90s and, and start uh, zeros yeah. where we just got a lot of like epic movies and and the sword and sandals lord of the rings gladiator and all that stuff and and the big blockbuster movies also came out and that has kind of like shaped my childhood so obviously over time that is something that you can see represented in my in my photography <laughs> and then there's that <clears throat> Scandinavian minimalist art in the back of my head too with my yeah with my minimalist uh, photos yeah. Paul just mentioned then about having a having Nigel dancing in the shot where does that come from Cause all your shots you always try and get a person in them I mean then from the Faroe Islands the Lake District that time when you have James Popsis in the shot where does that come from because that just adds that extra little bit of something yeah so it's <sighs> To begin with, I very much had this romantic feeling for a landscape where I did not want to have human elements in there. It should just be like the clean landscape. But over time, I I kind of found that I really enjoyed this more like adventure feeling. And when I went from not only shooting with the wide angle lens, but started photographing with the longer focal lengths too, and really like, as you know, compress the landscape, get that perspective compression. I just found out that having a person in there just gave so much more to the photo and it just helped so much more convey the the, the vastness and, and how big nature actually is compared to us small puny humans and <laughs> I, I just find that, that is, it, it just helps show show the scale but also gives that adventure feeling to the photos yeah, yeah definitely so mad um, what you've obviously I, i've just discovered you were a teacher as was i and one of the things that you do very strongly in your videos i believe is the storytelling element humor me because my family will say, when they say, oh, you're such a teacher, that's never a compliment when any of my family says that to me. <laughs> However, how much has your teaching background influenced your approach to videography? That is a very good question. Um, obviously, throughout teachers' college here in Denmark, I got like a, a, a lot of like theories about how to approach these things. Uh, the, the sad thing was that our education was not very practice-oriented. Okay. I've got a lot of practical experience from being a gymnastic coach um basically since like my early teenage years mm. and up to 
maybe in twenties, as far as I remember. So I've got a lot of like hands-on when it comes to to that uh, educational part, and then obviously combining that with my education as a teacher and generally just like yeah engaging with humans my entire life for the most part it's it's <laughs> like i don't consider myself introvert or anything like that so it's it's just like you know you you go through life and uh, you you polish off the the most uh, annoying things about yourself and and then on and the other end you <laughs> yeah. hopefully yeah. learn how yeah. to communicate <laughs> that's a good point what's more important to you is to get that story to the person or just to get an image that it's epic there's you could say two i suppose you could own that but what's more important to you yeah so so i've always considered myself a landscape photographer first yeah, of course yeah and for me um i i hold it in my highest regard to get a proper photo that yeah people look at in the videos and think wow that is nice or cool or whatever or at least something i myself <laughs> feel confident showing that i really <laughs> enjoy uh, for me that is the most important also more important than getting the exact b-roll or, or getting the exact videography right in the video i make sure to film as much b-roll as i can and talk as much mm -hmm. to the camera as i can in the field but for the most part if I don't get things exactly, I can always like voice over it. And, and as we do with photography, <laughs> fix yeah. it in post. Uh, and, and that is, that's a huge, huge part. I, uh, when I started out, I think on YouTube, I was probably one of the first ones in the landscape photography genre who did as much voiceover as I did, because I actually started out just talking to the camera and then using B-roll uh, and mm -hmm. telling the story. It's not before later I actually started introducing like what we define as like the vlogging part yeah. to my videos. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, from the very beginning, it was very natural that I voiced over a lot of it. And personally, I still find it to give quite a nice dynamic to the video. So it's not just me in the field talking, but also me afterwards telling the story, reflecting on what actually happened and and trying to figure out and and the pacing of that it's yeah. i generally just try to make a video that i don't find boring myself yeah certainly your videos are captivating in every aspect regards <laughs> to the storytelling and also the, the images just sublime um thank you so much uh, yeah sure Please, uh, separate, out, just out of interest uh, i don't know if you've seen tom heaton's most recent video but do you mm -hmm. separate out I'm going on a video shoot or I'm going on a photo shoot. Yeah, that's, so an, that's an interesting one. Yeah. For the most time, both. Okay. So it, 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 it's really that simple. For the most time, both. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I sadly haven't spent too much time with Thomas. Um, we only had like a week together in Lanzarote last year. Uh, oh. But I just know how much he works and how much he's focused on telling that story with video. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably like 80% or 70% of, of what he's doing. Um, I, I I am so fixated <laughs> on getting that landscape photo that I really, really enjoy. Yeah. And when it comes to the landscape photos, I'm, I'm often, I, I just stop myself because I'm overproducing landscape photos like crazy. Uh, I think last year I calculated that uh, my output of photos per video was like 13 or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when you compare to like Thomas or Nigel or, or, or some of the others, like I'm, I'm way above what they do per video. Uh, so I could probably turn that back a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Give yourself a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so much work. It's so much work. Like the video editing part of course takes time but throwing everything out on the timeline and getting it set up like i don't know if i'm out a morning and i have like five or six clips of myself it doesn't take a long time what takes a long time is to actually finish the photos because it's always so much back and forward and putting them out over to your ipad on your phone looking at them on different screens and then going back in and fixing them and yeah it, it's making the photos and especially when i end up making like 30 photos in a video i always like kick myself but yeah <laughs> yeah i just can't yeah. it I, I just can't help myself once i'm out and and i really hit like a golden morning that is really good 
I just shoot east and west all the time. Nice. So yeah. I have a question about, I think last year was your first trip to Slovenia. Is that correct? Yes. Now I'm, I'm a Slovenia addict and I was at Sveti <laughs> Tomas, I think one day before you, which I might've been kicking myself for looking at your publicity there. So if you had to choose uh, Slovenia or Tuscany, <laughs> I'm Why just saying both? that. Why, why not both? They're, they're quite yeah. close. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a good answer. answer. Well converted oh. Slovenia lovers. I, uh, hmm. I, hard repressed. I would probably have to say Tuscany, Fair just, just because you get that extra bonus with the food. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Slovenia okay. food was good. It was really good. It was very like yeah, obviously from down there and German-ish oriented more so than Italian oriented, especially where me and my sister, we ate, but it's, uh, Slovenia was fantastic. It was phenomenal. I loved it. But um, it's also quite, quite spaced out, isn't it? To get to work in Tuscany, you can particularly in one particular area. Um, yeah. Like, you know, you, you can always go to Valdocia and, and, yeah. and that is like the main photography hotspot uh, more so than in, in Slovenia, but then still, like, I didn't feel that for the hotspots that are famous in landscape photography in, in, in Slovenia, we didn't have to drive more than, for the most part, half an hour if we located us, ourselves probably during night or maybe 45 minutes. And yeah. the, the furthest away was like an hour. So it, it wasn't too bad. Like, you could stay in one location and just spend the entire time there in Slovenia, not like in Iceland where you have to change hotel or, or place uh, each night or every other night. I've noticed that, yeah. And these uh, vlogs these guys do, yeah, the, the changes have gone from hotel to hotel. Yeah. What were I they did, do, Glenn? I didn't, pick, were... I didn't pick that up when I went to Iceland. I, I thought uh -huh. you'd do the majority of the places from from Reykjavik and just drive down and go back. But I didn't realise just how far away things were. Like going to Vic and doing places like Skogafoss on the way, it, it was a long, long way. And mm -hmm. it was winter, it wasn't summer. Uh, I, I would certainly recommend getting different hotels and places and moving your way, moving way around. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What we're going to do this time is uh, we're going to do the images, uh, get them up on the screen, and we'll talk you through some of your, <laughs> your of course, uh, talents of your work. And uh, be amazed, guys, when you see these images. I'm talking to the viewers here. Be amazed when you see these images. Absolutely epic. We've checked them out. We've cheated. We've looked at them before putting on the show tonight and we love I would, them. I would be disappointed if you hadn't. <laughs> exactly. It's time for that part of the show on Landscape Lenscast Podcast where we all take a look at the images for this week from present and past. We don't find that at all embarrassing, Mads. Not at all. It's a nice little bit of cheese. I it, always say, so well, get rid of the cheese. <laughs> yeah, um, I've got a little bit of cheese. a huge wheel of stilton. That's what that is. Well, you, you <laughs> mentioned yes, churches, and that's your church choir. Guys, uh, we made it to this part of the show where we all look at these this week's images and what images we're going to look at tonight. This is Maz Peters Everson's work. So, Maz, um, talking about the first image here, the conditions are absolutely epic. Uh, obviously, you've you're in the UK here, and uh, yeah, just tell us more about the, the conditions, how you got them on that day. It just seems um, beautiful. Yeah, so so this specific location is a huge thank you to Nigel uh, Danson. Uh, I was visiting mm -hmm. him and James, and we hang out with Rick and Jack Lodge was there too, and yeah, it was oh, yeah. just some great days. And we started in Wales, and then. We went back home to Nysel for a couple of days and then we tried to figure out when we wanted to drive to the Lake District. And we could see on the weather forecast that there was a decent chance of fog. Uh, so we went up there the day before and mm -hmm. then we decided we would probably go to uh, Lafric Fell right here. Yeah. And when we came up, like it was the completely right decision. It was one of the best photography experiences I've had uh, in my entire career photographing here. Uh, yeah, there's there's not yeah. a whole lot more to say than yeah we got perfect. I, I'm actually we could just like yeah. shoot 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 pick out all these details. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually in awe of this Maz because I've been up Lufrig Fell about ten times, 
trying to get conditions like this and I've never got them. <laughs> I mean, from watching your video, there's one shot I absolutely loved and that was that drone shot you got mm, with the yeah, sun yeah. coming through and everything. That was fantastic. But this yeah, is thank just, you. yeah. Thank you. It's funny, like um, from my first trip to Britain, I spent 18 days there. Me and Sophie just like drove up from the south all the way up to Scotland and back down again. And we ended up on Chrome Hill. And that morning it was so foggy. Like I talked with one of the guys who had come there like hundred times. And he said that was in his top two. So I I seem to be fairly lucky with the weather when I go to Britain. When are you coming again? Because I'm going to book the week <laughs> off next time. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whenever you come, you always bring the weather with you. Yeah, yeah. I I, I will let everybody know that it's time to go out and shoot when I return. Don't, don't tell Darren, he'll book a week off and it'll rain. Oh, I'll be booking a month off, that'll be it. <laughs> yeah, you probably get nice blue skies then, Darren. There'll be no, no atmosphere or yeah. nothing. <laughs> I, I, I have uh, agreed with Nigel that I'll come over and, and uh, mm -hmm. visit him here in April it's going to be we have oh, yeah. a, a little project to shoot together and yeah. I'm, I may actually go to Scotland in the autumn um, so okay. yeah there you go oh well <laughs> yeah certainly it'll be uh, interesting that if you do um, I'll certainly keep that and guys as well watching this look out for that watch his space what I say there um, this image what I'm liking about it is of course the looking your eye just kind of travels right back there and the colours are popping out Although it's like almost autumnal colours it is a gather pretty much autumn was it when you shot this or run about autumn? Uh, yeah, al almost autumn. Well, it technically yeah. it was autumn because it was in in more or less the middle of October, as far as I remember. Uh, yeah. But but it was just before the tree started turning, and uh, yes. it it was one of the years where well, it was twenty twenty two, but autumn was very delayed, and so it was in twenty twenty three, as far as I remember. But uh, right. yeah, so so we didn't exactly nail um the autumn colors but in in my opinion i don't mind that uh, nigel is more like uh, is a bigger fan of autumn than i am i prefer early autumn late summer with the with yeah. the colder uh, greens on the leaves uh -huh. Uh -huh. i'm not necessarily a big fan of autumn colors uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I find that the uh, forest photos woodland photos they often become very warm and busy and dramatic yeah. and it's not drama i seek out in my forest photography yeah i feel that autumn is getting late well it's coming later every year um, oh yeah absolutely I don't know Same if that's warming or not but it's a sad, quite sad because you, we do have to wait probably in november sometimes to see the best of the colors yeah and in theory autumn would have started from september october um uh, but looking at the shot i do get what you mean by this it's, it's kind of like the, the trees are in full bloom still um, there's not many leaves left missing off the trees in autumn. You height autumn, you get a lot of bare trees as well as colours, etc. There, so yeah. I do like it. And the conifers and everything in the back, just in the backdrop, they are beautiful as well. Go to cracking yeah. ones. Yeah. Uh, you guys got any more questions about this image before we go to the next one? How much is it? How much is it as it was, or ha have you? Have you? As far as I remember, any... it's it's more or less as it was. Obviously, the right. fog probably wasn't that bright, but I just mm. really prefer to make um, a a white point for the most part in my photos. Yeah, uh, I really so... like the 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 whiteness at the back. Yeah, uh, it, it, I was wondering if that had been added to in any way. It, it, the, the, the light in the back. Uh, so so you just mean like at it, the, it, the, the top of the top of the image there. It's it's just pure white. Mm. Yeah, um, I as far as I remember, I don't think I made a gradient to it. So I don't nice. know if you can see the sun is hitting the top of the it's tree, the, so it's probably yeah. also hitting the fog. So if I just like, I probably underexposed. No, I didn't underexpose it because I usually shoot to the right, but it was probably right. a little bit darker when it came out and a little less contrasty because, as you know, raw photos always are. Yeah. But yeah. this one here is not a photo where I try to like you know go gung ho with with my editing. Uh, it's just nice. that normally yeah, you you do tend to to uh, expose to the right and try and make sure you don't lose the detail in the whites. Yeah, there's no detail there at all. But if if that's how it was, that's the fog. It's it, it's fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. you yeah. you can probably see on on like the the frame. There's like a little white border around it. I try mm -hmm. to like oh, yeah. get it to more or less there, and and the thing is that there there, there simply wasn't 
information there because of the fog. Like yeah. if the fog hadn't been there, then you would have seen ground or some trees or bushes or, or whatever. But the, the, yeah. there weren't anything there. It was just covered. Yeah. So this vi- this video, good. Alistair, it is well worth a watch because you mentioned before, Maz, about getting a lot of images per video. I think you <laughs> you excelled yourself on this one, what you did here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't remember how many photos it was, but maybe like 55 or something. But it's also like the, the longest <laughs> yeah. video on my ch- channel ever. It's like over an hour of just Lake District, me covering yeah. the Lake District. Oh, that's amazing. It was a ridiculous so project, but yeah. <laughs> this isn't the, the the one the one hour epic <laughs> epic uh, episode he did, is it? It it is. Yes, it, it is. is. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because I saw saw something another uh, video doing referring to it, and I thought, have I watched that? <laughs> I don't think I have. So I, I must get around to watching it. Yeah, the majority of my Lake District videos, uh, Lake District photos, are most likely from that single that video. One, that one, yeah. Lovely. So you guys oh. okay to go to the next one here? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sense, so I'll just uh, move to the next one there. But yeah, I love uh, forest scenes. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Can, you, can these guys spot uh, oh, anything yeah. there? Particularly? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's to the ear. Yeah. It's a cracking shot. And I love um, the fineness of the, the, the leaves on the left-hand side of the oak oak tree there. It's a very like light kind of leaves, very fine looking, and the algae, yeah. the of course the on the, the trees themselves. Yeah. What the I like about this one is, you got you got the two deer looking at you, yeah, and then on the other gap, you've got that fallen branch and tree just going through the mist. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's very is nice and serene is this. Mm. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's way more interesting for me to listen to you guys analyze my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, it, it's uh, yeah. It, um, for me, this photo here is like I, I really enjoy the like the the background atmosphere and fog that makes the deer stand out, and then obviously Ooh. the it is the deer that makes the photo because it's like those two looking at the viewer and repeating with the shape. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, that's uh, why, why mainly I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, that's the most obvious thing you see when you look at the image straight away is the, the, the deer it transfix, you're transfixed to that straight away. And just amazing. Just how they look right into the camera. Yeah. yeah. Both at the same time. How long do they stand there for? Cause deer tend to just bolt as soon as they see yeah. them. Yeah. Not not very long. Uh, I remember I, oh, how was it? I took this photo and then I was like, oh, ne- I need to make some B-roll. And then they started running. So oh, yeah, right. they, they, they are not, the, the thing is these deer are in a, in a deer garden. We just have here north of Copenhagen. So mm-hmm. they are somewhat used to humans and bicycles mm-hmm. that go in there and, and, so, and so forth. But they yeah. generally... Dependent if they, if they're getting food or whatever, they they're fairly easy to photograph, but they're not getting too close to humans, especially not when they are out uh, among the trees. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful picture. I like that. And what we do, guys, we have so many pictures we've got from Mads. I've got twenty pictures, I think, or twenty four pictures, I think. Well, let's together. move on then. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Move on. Um, <laughs> so we uh, we also videos, uh, Mads. That's all. <laughs> yep, you learn, you learn how to take photographs in winter. Move on. <laughs> well, that one. Loving this one here with the bottoms of the trees is amazing. This the detail of the the roots. I also love these winter shots as well. The mm. depth of it is amazing. Yeah, it's it's more the, about... the ex- exact same area. Like I've shot yeah. the previous photo and this one here within maybe fifty meters mm. or so, uh, but obviously on different days. Uh, the, this specific photo here, I photographed it while it was snowing, uh, mm-hmm. and that helped me to to I, I used some dehaze for the background to uh, to mm-hmm. make sure that I got a little bit more separation to the background, and also used dehaze in in the foreground to remove some of those details and and the contrast there in the foreground. So I had the trees stand out even more. Yeah. The snow yeah, isn't no. showing up. The, the falling snow isn't showing up as much as the. No, it it it, it was a, a f- ah, I don't. It wasn't like a long, long exposure. It was like a short, long exposure, but enough for the streaks to just like you know be invisible. Mm-hmm. But your, your enough for the, the effect one that really of, st- of the atmosphere to come forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's nice. There's the, the the mist as well in the background there. And it's the, when you're doing these kind of images in the, the woodlands, when it's just, when you've got mist, is, is nice, but when you've got like snow as well, the elements and just the aesthetics of the image is so pleasing in regards to everything in this image. I really like the split tree smack. That's right exactly what I was going to say. That yeah. split in the middle there, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me that 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 is what the photo is about. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. This photo, and I have a corresponding one from the same morning as the previous photo. Um, oh. They remind me so much of Narnia. I I just like expect mm -hmm. to go in through that split in the tree there, and then come out through a wardrobe. Like it it's <laughs> and and especially because like I it. I have the I have the well. It looks like a summer version, but it was taken in October, so, so an mm -hmm. autumn version. And then I, I I have this winter version, and and as you know from the the Narnia Chronicles, how how the children come into Narnia and then they save everything, and then it gets summer uh, instead of winter. Yeah. So I I really in like the those um, those associations with these photos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they split the trees, amazing. Uh, you can just picture a little rabbit there sitting there. Shake, shielding from the <laughs> snow. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> so, guys, anyone else want to talk about this image? No, it's lovely. It is good. It's they remind me of the Ents in Lord of the Rings as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. sort of yeah. yeah it's actually, I, I think the trees are elm trees, uh -huh. and they are standing in this, like, okay. swampy area. Uh, uh -huh. and, and, and I guess because... It's swampy and the ground is like sinking down. That's why the roots are so uh, as exposed. Oh, as right. They are. Mm. Yeah. Right. Point. Yeah, and all the contrast. The tree on the right hand side, the second tree from the right. The contrast of that one. I don't know what um, type. I'm doing. It's an elm tree also, but it's darker. If you can see it on the right hand side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The contrast of it looks it looks really good <laughs> with it amongst all the trees. Love that. So great. I'll we'll go to the okay. next one. So. Lovely. <laughs> oh, evergreens. Late district again. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. So yeah, tell us more about this one, Mads. I love the uh the, the, the rays, the love rays I call them. A beautiful just coming from the sky there. The drama love in the sky. Race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the so, uh, so this here is uh, yeah, obviously from the Lake District. Uh mm -hmm. it was like was it the last full day, I think we had yeah and we just decided to to um, hike up castle crack and it was one of those days where we just got like shower upon shower upon shower but also mm -hmm. where the sun broke out in between those showers and so there was like a lot of like humidity in the air and rain in the air so once the 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 sun broke out we got these beautiful sunbeams and it was basically just a question about in, in this case here yeah. When I we came up to the top, I really enjoyed this view because for me your farmland that you have over in in Britain is just so characteristic and I really wanted on this trip to capture that uh, essential British landscape. Uh, yeah. so it was just a question about waiting for for a, a shower to pass over us or pass by. And then yeah. I knew that there was a pretty decent chance that the sun would come out. So basically just waited for that. I remember Nigel and I were standing a little bit further up and I had to like run because it happened so fast. Uh, but I did manage to uh, to get the <laughs> shot here. And it's one of my favorite from from uh, 2022. So uh, yeah, I can't believe it's one and a half years almost since <laughs> <laughs> I was there. But yeah, yeah it was uh, incredible. Yeah, time goes fast as well. And it? it's just one of these things as we get older. Yeah, it's beautiful. I just love the rays. I love the everything, the depth of the image as well, looking at the, of the hills in the back there. Um, so yeah. much interest in the foreground. It's beautiful. Really lovely shot. Anyone yeah. else got anything to say? Alistair, what do you think of this shot? Uh, I'm blown away when I first saw that. Absolutely yeah. blown away by it. It's uh, it's not the sort of shot I'm going to get easily unless there's a road going along there. Uh, but I just <laughs> love, as you say, the, the, the love rays. I, I, I love seeing that. Uh, I try to capture them whenever possible. Uh, it really adds yeah. to the scene dramatically. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. So we'll get on to the next one. This is uh, this is epic, as I say. We'll use that word. It's, it's twice I've said that now. So, <laughs> so this is lovely. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, the eye. It's food candy for the eye. 
Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, again. It's also from Lafrik Fell, uh, and and we, it was funny because this one here, uh, I remember Nigel and James had started heading down because we agreed we could probably get to one more location uh, before the the fog completely uh, went away, mm. and I was just like. Uh, because I knew Nigel would be slower uh, because of his back, I could stay a little bit longer and then run down and catch yeah. up with him before he got to the car. So I just stood there and and tried just with the long lens photographing into the fog and and get these layers. I had said, I had, had I have seen different kinds of these kinds of photos before, <laughs> um, maybe from like Germany or the Alps or maybe also England where you like get like a forest. Mm. And you get those sunbeams through the trees and and the low fog there, uh, so I knew I just kind of wanted something like this year, and then I experimented with including that little foreground part there or not, and I ended up really enjoying having that foreground. Uh, I would have preferred to have a little person standing on that rock right there. <laughs> I would have or sit or sit. But, but Where's just, Nigel when you need them? Where's Nigel? Yeah, that, that, that one anger point. And I thought about it when I was there, but uh, that was just way too long to walk over yeah. there uh, because mm. it's, it is quite a a, a long uh, focal length I'm photographing with here. But it turned out to still be one of my favorite photos. And it was funny when I was like doing my apartment here, like what did I want to put on my wall? Yeah. And I ended up with this one here because it's much more airy and much more light than, let's say, the previous photo. The previous photo would have taken up a lot of like yeah. wall space here in the yeah. background uh, mm -hmm. and attention compared to this one here. Yeah. yeah. What focal length were you shooting at, Mads? I don't remember exactly, but I was definitely above 200 millimeter. I think yeah. so with this one. Beautiful. It's just the compression of the shot is beautiful, isn't it? Just the, it it's the layers. Thing. It's them layers and just the silhouettes yeah. of the trees. It's, yeah. Mm. And That's how fantastic. smug were you when you got down the bottom and just went, lads, top this? <laughs> I, I, I don't remember particularly that this one was one I boasted about because we had got so many insane photos that morning. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. so I, I knew that the others also had got got a lot uh, but we were all very very happy because we knew that we oh, had yeah. just yeah. like stroke gold. So <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it was really good. Yeah. I do like how you've got them kind of interlinked, so they're doing that, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, between. it really looks good. Yeah, yeah, the colours in the trees in the middle as well. That's what I like about your kind of eyes just kind of gravitate into that, and it just travels from side to side. It's really nice. Yeah, what course... thing I also personally really enjoy about this photo is it is exactly that it's out of the golden hour. I found over the okay. years that. As much as I enjoy photographing during morning and foggy mornings and and sunrise. I find that most of my favorite photos are actually not affected by like golden light. It's just out of the golden hour. Uh, you still get yeah. the atmosphere, but you actually get natural colors. And yeah. and I actually quite enjoy that for the most part. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's not, if it's, it is a, it's kind of warm, but it's at the same time, it's, it's kind of cool as well. Yeah. As you're going to the backdrop and going to the back of the image, it's more cooler. It's a beautiful shot of the tones. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. we'll go to anyone else got any questions on the I'll just say to Maz, I suppose where you are, I mean, we're all of myself, we're just up by Edinburgh, which is a similar kind of latitude to yourself over by, yeah, yeah. Denmark. Well, so uh, as you've got as this kind of longer, you know, golden air kind of extends a lot longer than just an hour, I think, certainly this time of year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely, it, it does. Golden hour is, is fairly long, so we have a lot of time to shoot during morning, uh, and like with the fog, it lingers around often, like for three or four hours mm -hmm. uh, the only difference is that i don't have as many vantage points so yeah. i often have to use the drone instead uh, course, simply yeah. just because denmark is as flat as it is uh, compared to to britain yeah that's beautiful um we'll go to the next one and there we go nigel the scale of it is amazing isn't it um, this image, yeah. Tell us more about this image, Maz. And yeah, yeah so this this uh, photo is uh, from the waterfall Fossa, mm -hmm. uh, which translates to waterfall in uh, in, in Faroese, <laughs> and uh, it's the largest largest waterfall up there. And and the interesting part about this photo is that I've actually 
cut out or excluded maybe 75% of the waterfall uh, to get this shot here. And it just goes to show how you can like zoom in and crop in and actually make something look even larger uh, yeah. than, than, than it would be if you didn't. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah exactly. uh, this was just the day or two days. I think it was the day after uh, me and Nigel's last workshop in, in the Pharaohs. And I went up there and photographed. I, I filmed some stuff for a waterfall video. Mm -hmm. And then I came down and I asked Nigel to go out and stand and pose for me just to make sure that I got the photo with him also. And uh, yeah, so we did. And I captured it uh, from down the road. It's very easy photo to get uh, this one here because it's literally I'm standing on the road next to the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, but obviously <laughs> okay. it requires someone to be up there. Mm. Yeah. Nigel looks a bit precarious standing up there. <laughs> yeah. And it looks quite, it looks a bit, <laughs> not dangerous, but just yeah. why, why the angle, why they actually zoomed into it. And, you know, it does make look the person look a bit precarious, just standing at the edge of the, the actual, you know, waterfall, the cliff there, cliff yeah. edge. Yeah. It's it, a lovely shot. Uh, unless it's windy, it it's not particularly dangerous standing up no, there. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lovely shot. Uh, guys, you any, it's, anyone else want to talk about? Paddle to get there, just out of interest. Hmm. Sorry, yeah. one more time. Did he have to paddle to get there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Swim? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, sure, you have to upsail down there if you want to get back down. <laughs> That's a stunning image. Yeah, I, I, what you said as well, regards to zooming into it, uh, it brings a scale. It, it actually shows how big it is. It gives a, you know, and you, you, you put something small in there, not saying Nigel's mm. small, but is in small as in height, of course. It gives a scale with the grandness of the actual, uh, the, the whole shot itself. Really yeah, nice. I've, I've the the top part or the back part of the waterfall there. I've cropped it just underneath uh, some of the parts where you can see the sky, and oh, yeah. it's very much on purpose that I've excluded mm. the sky because in that way it feels as if it's much taller than it actually yeah. is. Yeah, it mm. does. Yeah, mm. could be good on brand. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't know, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Lise, you're going to say there. I was going to say the short sh the short shutter speed works really well here. I just think yes. Because it's it, it's frozen the movement and it draws mm. that attention right into the center of the frame it just yeah it, it works really really well it, it, i don't tend to, i tend to kind of do quarter to a half a second but i actually think sometimes when i look at things like this i think I've got to try shorter shutter speeds much more i kind generally of find the, the over the years because I remember back in 2015 when I was in Iceland for the first time and photographed mm -hmm. waterfalls for the first time, because again, we don't have waterfalls in Denmark. I just slapped the 10 stop filter on everything in two minutes, exposed everything. Um, yeah. But looking back at those photos, you yeah, some of them were like atmospheric, but you do lose mm -hmm. the sense of scale often and, and drama that you can get with waterfalls. So I find that basically the bigger the waterfall, the faster the shutter speed I use. Yes. Um, yeah. But then if I go with the wide angle and I have like, you know, the, the classic foreground with the stream coming towards you, yeah. then I usually take a fast shutter speed for the main waterfall, the background waterfall, and then like half a second, one third of a second yeah. to capture the streaks in the foreground and then merge those together in Photoshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, beautiful shot. Um, so we're going to move to the next one unless mm -hmm. anyone's else, I'll still anyone's got anything to say. I want to be asking a question about the pharaohs later, maybe after the pictures, if you don't yeah, mind. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, of course. Okay, we'll move on to the next one there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this. This is uh, scale. Oh, scale as well, regards to the mm -hmm. people in there, but also abstract. The abstract is beautiful. Yeah, it's it's funny with my abstracts. Uh, I'm I'm I tend to not be a big fan of abstract photos. Okay. I I see them when when they are there, but they 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 just don't have longevity for me. But yeah. Only if I can like include people in the abstracts, <laughs> yeah. and that requires it to be a big vista photo. This one here is taken with a drone in Iceland, uh, here back in November it was, and yeah. we we just stopped by and had like a little drone uh, sequence where people could fly up uh, to this glacier, and we knew that there were tours going in there. But we didn't know how many people were actually climbing around on this glacier because <laughs> with, with glacier walking. And there were like some, I think those you can see right there in the middle are probably scientists because they were crawling mm -hmm. uh, down into the uh, crevices. Right. And and, uh, and and that just like, they, they, they were just perfect standing right there because you could see the foreground. So this one here, specifically, I actually flew the drone 
back a little bit and use the three times zoom on the new uh, Mavic 3 Pro. And, and that helped compress the scene a little bit. I also have a more wide angle photo where the foreground is more pronounced, but not as, uh, yeah, as not, not as compressed. I think, yeah. I think that's the yeah. word to use. Yeah. Now it works well as that being zoomed in. You can see all the crevices and all the detail, the black lines coming yeah. through. Yeah. yeah. It really is nice, is it? Yeah, and, and you get that feeling of like how big it is and, and how dangerous it is with those mm. people standing up there. You yeah, definitely. You definitely yeah. do not want to fall down there. <laughs> I think you've got, you've got, it's almost like the peaks are forming yeah. a leading line out towards these tiny little people in the distance. Yeah, it's yeah. Really, it's interesting really what you said as well with uh, people in the shot. It makes it look more of a, uh, you know, like this Vista shot. Um, yeah, like you, you, you could, you abstract. could crop this into like a, 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 a one by one uh, uh -huh. just the lower part and just make it completely abstract but that wouldn't do anything for me really? yeah. Yeah. I, don't I don't think it would work as well if you did that no it won't no. I, I, I like a it. different picture yeah, yeah. A different picture. It, it would be a completely different picture but yeah. th this here is so much more like what i oh, it's much yeah at. yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's just completely different and it just kind of draws you right into it as well it draws you yeah. into the image yeah i think we mentioned it could be to one by one you wouldn't get you wouldn't get a sense of scale either no no, no yeah. definitely not it could be a small <laughs> close-up one by one crop of a you know of ice or anything just, uh, <laughs> it could, yeah. yeah it could be anything but yeah it's beautiful it's a, it's a cracking shot i really like this about yep. uh yourself louise gonna say I, it's it's interesting that it almost looks like it's marble you know sometimes you go to those, mm. those beautiful dramatic mm. rock surfaces and you yeah. see it and it's i think that's partly why i, I find this fascinating the marble-esque th sort of things running through it it's lovely yeah yeah like it, it's funny with the glaciers in iceland because <laughs> when you when you photograph them before the first snow has fallen, mm. or mm -hmm. at the very least, the winter snow has has like melted. You you get these. Uh, if you photograph them during summer and autumn, I find them to be a little bit more interesting because they're more blue. They're melted like on top, so you don't yeah. get that white layer of fresh snow on top that I actually find ru ruins oh, yeah. the glacier photos, uh -huh. and you can see often that it's a it's a glacier from Iceland because of the uh, the uh, black lines, uh, yes. old uh, vol yeah. volcanic, volcanic ash yeah. Yeah. that has fallen okay. on that specific year. Yeah, it's contrast amazing in regards to the, the dark bits there as well, and also the, the 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 bits of ice on top of it, the loose bits of snow ice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just the detail, it's the potential to it. It's amazing, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one, and that's uh, we'll enjoy us tonight. <laughs> Great. So, oh yeah, that's an off scale image, you could say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cracking. Uh, Maz, tell us more about this one. Was this Iceland? Was it? Yeah, I, for me, this is very much the epitome of Iceland <laughs> uh, with the sheep down there. Uh, it, it, this is uh, the waterfall Hauifoss, one of the tallest waterfalls they have in, in Iceland, and oh, yeah. uh, as you can see, specifically in this photo, I in, included the sky. Uh, I just wanted the entire waterfall. It was more about the sheep there. And yeah. I there were sheep walking it around down here in the valley and and we tried our best not to get too close to them because we didn't want to like scare them off. Mm -hmm. um, and with a little bit of patience and 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 luck being in the right place at the right time, I, I captured this photo where like the the sheep in the back is looking straight left and then you have, one that is turned its head a little bit more, and then one <laughs> in the mm. foreground that turns its head e even more. So you get yeah. again this this rhythm in uh -huh. the sheep yeah. uh, that I I quite enjoy also. So yeah, it's a uh, it's it it's not so focused on like you know the foreground grass and all that stuff. It's just the sheep and the waterfall, and yeah. again fast shutter speed just to capture the moment. Yeah. And the atm the atmosphere with the spray coming up as yeah. well just. It's going yeah. to see that yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. There yeah. was so much water in the waterfall uh, that that day. It was also <laughs> raining, so uh, yeah. It it can't be. However, it's usually there's usually a, a lot of water in it, but on on really wet periods and rainy days, you can get a lot of water in that yeah. waterfall. Mm, yeah, I mean it, uh, the uh, I don't think it reminds me of. I think it reminds me of the Vikings episode. Uh, where they're on mm. Iceland and the water waterfalls in the background. I don't know if you remember the scenes uh, when the uh, Floggy goes to it goes away on a pilgrimage, 
Angel uh, yeah, I, I don't remember the specific scenes, but I, I have seen most of Vikings. So uh, Yeah, really good. Uh, yeah. Anyone else want to talk about this image? Not me. No. I think it's, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's, yeah. It pretty much does, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, there's nothing nothing you can see. that it, It's just there. It's beautiful. It's got everything, all the greens. It's, uh, it's generally also spray. like... With with my photos, when when I try to describe them, in, in the end they're just pretty pictures. Like there's there's, there's mm. n- not a whole lot of like you know deeper meaning to them. They, they they are just like you look at them, hopefully, and you are like, oh wow, nice, <laughs> epic, epic. I I, I have epic. quite a uh, yeah. I I focus a lot on like the aesthetics of the photo more so than yeah maybe the story or that there's any kind of interpretations. Like okay. It, for me, it is yeah. aesthetics first and foremost. Yeah, because it's kind of re- very obvious. It's not you have to look into deep to find a story that it, mm. it speaks. The image speaks by itself. Really. Yeah, that's really lovely. I will go to the next one, guys. And there we go. We mm. have got another mm-hmm. epic mm-hmm. shot of a waterfall uh, cascading <laughs> down there. Very cool. Please yeah. tell me you were inside that jeep going across. <laughs> Sorry, one more time. Were you, were you inside that Jeep flying the drone? No, no, that's oh. not my Jeep. But I, I did, uh, this was also during a, a workshop. It was actually from last summer. Uh, and usually um, when when I run these with Jerome and we go to this waterfall, it's it's quite a classic waterfall in Iceland. And, and you usually see this waterfall with a Jeep mm. or, or some kind of car in it. Mm. And and this year is just my version of it. Is that a road across but, the top? Is that actually a road there? Sorry? Yeah. Is that actually a road there where the Jeep is? Uh, is, is it what? Is it actually a road? Yeah, yeah, you, you can yeah. see the road continue so there. It fords the, the, the river there. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the highlands. And you the road, you literally have to cross this place to uh, to to move on. You you need to have a 4x4 four four and okay. with good clearance uh, mm-hmm. because it, it's... It's quite deep. It's not the easiest place to drive up when you leave the water. Being in the water is not a big deal, but it's actually getting back up on the road that can be problematic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, usually when when I run these with your own, we uh, there's always one of us that that helps all the workshop participants down there with the drones, and and we have to, even though both years we have only had like six guests. We usually take turns in in who flies the drone, so we don't hit each other with yeah. the drones. Yeah. Uh, and then the other uh, guide goes up. In this case, it was me driving back and forward. But this day, apparently, there was like a convoy of fifteen <laughs> 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 other four by fours that were traveling together that uh, came oh. and crossing here. So we could just like pick our favorites. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, there was a uh, yeah. But you you will see most like many Highland photographers and, and workshop leaders and brochures from the Highland probably has some kind of version of this photo because yeah. it, it is just like, like where else do you cross a, on top of a waterfall in a car? Right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe in the entire world. <laughs> and that's it. That one that certainly has a story. Yeah. To it, that image. <laughs> that's a real adventure right there. Yeah, definitely. Anyone else want to talk more about this image? One of the things I would say about Mads's photography is that he inspires you to go and visit a place and just kind of scratch deeper. That's awesome that to hear. <laughs> and yeah, well, and and just this is this is kind of classically one of those. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking, so Mads, your Tuscan tree down by the chapel, chapel Vitaletta. Um, which which one of them? Oh, okay. Uh, t- uh, Tus- okay, the Chapel Vita letter that you did. A, a, you were down the hill from that in in Tuscany, and you found this tree. Yes. Um, and you shot this tree, and quite by accident, I found the tree. Mm-hmm. But what you didn't say at all was that you had to wade through a bean field to get there, and <laughs> and, and you know, and there was a little bit of a quagmire by the time I got there because there had been quite a lot of rains. And you sort of sit there and you just think that's the bit you don't see in the background, and it's it's all the work that you put in to getting your shots that you yeah, so endlessly yeah. go. And here I am. It's it's it, it, we're, we're we're taken over by your passion for the place, <laughs> and you sit there and think, yeah, I could, I could do that easily. Yeah, that bean field was not easy to get through. <laughs> you look at something like this, you just think, yeah, I'd be brilliant. I could go and hire a car, a little car, couldn't I? I could do that. Now, that was just a little yeah. field. You used to try go on some of the hikes in the Faroes. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, full respect to you for that. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, he should have told you there was there was a path on the other side that he came in by. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. I checked. I checked every angle on that. <laughs> yeah, when, when it comes to especially the Highlands in, in Iceland, obviously it comes with a lot of like experience and, and getting in there. Uh, yeah. You definitely need a four by four. You need to know what you're doing because uh, like some of the things we see driving in there, like we saw at one point, uh, it was like a Volvo station car ish. Mm. It may have been four by four, but it has like very, very low ground clearance. Yeah. And the and the tires we, we came by, it was standing next in, in the rope was just like shredded. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, especially in the Icelandic highlands, when, when the Icelanders say that you shouldn't do a thing, you, probably shouldn't do a thing <laughs> <No>. <laughs> take it from the locals believe it yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i can believe that as well the terrains um yeah it's quite rough in it <laughs> it is it, it 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 is very very much but then again like if you know what you're doing the highlands are not that dangerous it's it's a big area but it's not like that big uh, at least not like the the southern part that we usually photograph in yeah yeah i i would love to go to iceland that's my next wish to go there spend a week there or so uh, I, I i i would say for for everybody who is a landscape photographer like iceland even though it has been shot to death yeah it, it's Skulls it is something. just it, it transforms you as a landscape photographer uh, you, you cannot can not yeah. be excited about being there yeah i love the beaches down there uh, and yeah. like sand except beautiful and, and you have to go as, as a photographer and as a photography group Unfortunately, I did it with a family friend and her friend, and it was really just a tourist thing. Mm -hmm. And how to do your photography with people who oh. aren't really that interested? Yeah, it, yeah. it's just a nightmare. And it, it's it's generally always like that when it comes to photography trips, right? That you want to do it either yourself or with some other photographers because yeah. Yeah. going with the family like this, I've never done it, but I cannot imagine going <laughs> with my. Yeah. Well, I, I have actually been to Iceland <laughs> with my sister, but she's all she always knows that when we go there, like when we went to Slovenia, it's on my premises. Like I'm the photographer, <laughs> I decide. And yeah. she's like, fine. <laughs> she takes care of the logistics uh, when it comes to food and all that stuff. So that's all good. <laughs> if you go with your family and friends, if you're on a whistle stop tour bus or whatever, and they're, they're stopping you at the locations, and then you get out, you get the tripod set up, and the person goes, right, guys, next stop. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go to the next oh wow oh, oh. oh yeah <laughs> yeah I'm having a photogasm <laughs> that was beautiful it has beautiful taken shot. me years and years and years to finally get a That's photo amazing. from the ice beach in Iceland that I'm really happy about. <laughs> yeah it's amazing it, it looks like it looks like something that the leak would have created. Yeah yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would say bit of better. Ice. <laughs> it's a sculpture and it's a bit it of is, yeah. Art. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful it, yeah it's Max funny just gives an introduction to this one it uh, deserves its introduction of course yeah yeah it's it's funny with the ice beach because when you go there you can either get I have experience getting a completely empty beach um, but for the most part there's quite a decent amount of ice there and I have generally just been as lucky as i've been with the weather in the uk i have been very unlucky with the weather in iceland uh, yeah. for the ice beach when i when i've been there it's not that often i've actually got a proper sunrise uh, there it's generally a sunrise location uh, this year basically all year round mm -hmm. um and and you have to combine like a sunrise with proper waves the beach has to be good where you can actually walk a little bit out into it and then you have to find you have you need to have enough ice there so that you can find those shapes that are quite unique and this one here is one of the most unique and beautiful i've ever seen there yeah. yet you don't want so much ice that you cannot work in it because when the waves come in sometimes those waves can be bigger than you think they are and you need to like either stand your ground or retreat a little bit so it's very much back and forward it, it is you need to know what you do with your camera and your surroundings when you're at the ice beach in iceland because else the ice beach will demand its sacrifice and that is usually your camera so uh, yeah there's a lot of people who have lost their cameras on the ice beach in iceland mm -hmm because waves or sand or yeah. they've fallen over or whatever 
<clears throat> just staring at the detail. What's the ice. Here is the best then to get the ice just right then. Uh, gen all year round. It it doesn't really matter. Uh, the 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 glacier keeps uh, carving. Um, and and the thing is, the glacier carves the icebergs into the lagoon, and then yeah. because of the um, ebbs and flows of the ocean, uh, it comes into the lagoon, and then it pulls all the ice back out uh, through a little bottleneck. That bottleneck can like clump up with all the icebergs. But yeah. usually they just break apart and, and come out into the ocean. And then the waves push them back up onto the black beach. Yeah. And yeah. So is, but is that, generally that, all year round you, you can yeah. find ice on the ice beach. Is that just further along from, from Vic? I can't remember because I, I didn't manage to get it, there. It's I don't know where it is. Two and a half hours from Vic, as far as I remember. Maybe three hours oh, from right. Vic. Yeah. Right. So right. you need to get all the way out to the glacier lagoon, the famous glacier lagoon, Yukra Yeah. Salon. yeah. I knew I looked it up, but uh, I actually used your your map. You got a map that's available yep. to download from mm -hmm. your, your website uh, using Google Maps, and you show all the different. Uh, I think I think it's a Google map anyway, and you you show all yep. the different locations uh, to visit. And I was using that, but as I said, with what trip I went to, I I couldn't visit everywhere I wanted to go, so I couldn't remember exactly where that was. But no, if, it, I, it, if it, anyone's it, interested in going, then go go to my my Mass's, uh website and download that map but it's mm -hmm. fantastically useful yep how is that <laughs> there, there's 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 definitely enough for more than one trip on that map yeah definitely <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, I, 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 estimate, I estimate about a month there <laughs> yeah yeah you can probably reach most places within a month uh, on yeah. that map but then you need more time if you want to like return to the places and get proper conditions and all that yeah yeah Basic question, sorry to ask, a bit embarrassing. Is that wave coming in? Yes. Marvellous. I can sleep well tonight knowing that fact. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Really blimmin' lovely, that one. I do yes, like how you look at the picture um, and the, the reflection of the sun. You've just caught that in the yeah. that loop in the ice there. It's nice. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's the texture of the ice as well. Oh, it's, yeah. as, it's, as it's getting backlit as well, it's... Yeah, yeah. It's, just love the change. Fantastic. Cool. The cool I'd, be one, I'd be wanting to take it home. It magic really happens when the sun comes up and it backlights all, yeah. all the ice yeah. on the beach. Yeah. It it yeah. you're impressed when you go to the beach the first time before sunrise, mm -hmm. but when you actually get it backlit, it looks ridiculous. Like it's all these glowing pieces of ice that is just laying spread out on this black beach. So there's a reason why it's super famous. Like it, it, it is a special place. I've just been there 20 times by now, so I'm not else <laughs> <laughs> excited when going there, but I lose myself there too when I when I start photographing. So yeah. why not 20 times of course and, and then some how often have you actually been out to Iceland Maz? Sorry? How many times have you been out to Iceland? Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I, I I think I've been to to the the beach here in Stockness and Stocksness, Vesterhorn, probably the most. And and I have more than twenty finished photos from Vesterhorn, yeah, all yeah. from different locations. So nice. yeah. I, I've I've been there a lot, but obviously when I run the tours that I, I especially run before the pandemic, I took mm -hmm. like three south coast tours back to back so mm -hmm. within like one winter uh and if we had autumn to it too i would get to these places like seven times so it, it yeah yeah and and we also return to the ice beach usually on on each tour we return there once be because the first time people go that they are all overwhelmed don't know what to shoot they they yeah screw up the settings or something like that because there's so mm. many things to be aware of. Yeah. So we yeah. usually return to the ice beach uh, uh, once or twice. Yeah, that makes sense. Short time views epic now. <laughs> so I won't, I won't expect to get a shot like this on my first go then, Matt. Right, okay. No, no, it's uh, <laughs> the, this year is like the, the, the 20th the time for me going there or something like that. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have made that image your own. <laughs> it's beautiful. Cool. Thank you. There's one right. thing that bugs me so much about that photo still, and, uh -huh. it, and it is that the upper part of 
the uh, the chunk of ice there is so close to the horizon. I would have preferred to be a little bit lower, so it broke the horizon and and the sun was a little bit more like in the hole there. But yeah. Yeah. it is what it is. Like it's, yeah, it's not the first thing I've not. I've, you know, you point it out, but still, uh, it's, it's just a dream image. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's move on to the next epic. <laughs> it's epic indeed, and it's got Ooh. scale. Um, who was your model? Myself. Really? Is that a drone shot? No, no. It, it, oh, I, it, oh, you're it, a timer, right? Okay. It's the self timer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, nine, nine, okay. ninety percent of the photos with people in them, it's actually myself standing in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just use yeah. the intervalometer, just put it on, like I don't know. I guess it took me probably thirty seconds, yeah. forty seconds to run down there, and then it just yeah. takes like a photo every six or seven seconds uh, while I'm yeah. standing there, going a little bit back and forward, posing, and yeah, get just, the shot. It just makes the landscape so mm. want yeah. to be there when you see someone, just a scale of someone's size, size of the person. Yeah, yeah. again, it's, it's the atmosphere, is. isn't it? it the does, atmosphere yeah. just does it. Yeah, this one here, it's definitely the atmosphere. Like, it, we've been shooting there, like, for a few hours, and we mm. were actually about to, like, pack up, and then these clouds came in. I got a... Um, a, a panorama photo of the classic view from this place mm -hmm. here on, on the same day. And then we walked back. This is photographed from, there's like a little lighthouse there just towards these, the other two islands and the atmosphere, the, the sleet uh, helps create that atmosphere and that separation and that mood Yeah. that I was like, okay, I need to get this shot and with myself in it. So, uh, yeah, just set it up, react fast, run into the photo uh, or into the scene and then get the photo. Yeah, the light nice. and drama. It's, uh, you've got the dark, the, the, the moods of the clouds and the, you know, the rainy clouds in the, the top yeah. there as well. If you had to choose, Mass, between the Faroe Islands or Iceland, which one would it be? See, we love, we love these types of questions. <laughs> yeah, that's why we've got Darn on. <laughs> Iceland, and that's simply because Iceland has much more variety. Yeah. But I have yet to find a place in Iceland there is as epic and grand as the Faroe Islands. Like, okay. it, it's Iceland is almost there some places, um, mm -hmm. but but in, in the same scale as you get in the Faroe Islands, I, I and, and the same um possibility for variation in your photos uh the faroe islands are definitely the best for that yeah. um I, I usually people compare like lofoten iceland and the faroe islands uh -huh. and I, i'm saying try all three and see what rocks your boat the most because they are actually different enough so that i don't think it's fair to compare them right. like one, one, one to one they they offer something different that's a three. very diplomatic answer bas <laughs> so, Mass, I'm hearing an awful lot about, uh, and I can understand why, why uh, Lando is getting a little bit uh, antsy about mm -hmm. country groups, etc., going and charging, going on there. Has there been a demonstrable feeling of change in the time that you've been going out to here regarding kind of access? Absolutely, in, in the Faroe Islands. It's mm -hmm. uh, because Faroe Islands is part of Denmark and they made the same law because we don't have free roaming in Denmark either. And okay. neither do they have in the Faroe Islands. But the Faroe Islands look so much like Iceland. So many people are just like walking all over the place. And yeah. for good reason, because there's only sheep. Like the, the, the <laughs> I have heard some farmers complain that it disturbs the sheep. But honestly, the sheep are sleeping next to the bloody road. <laughs> if it, and, and even though cars are driving past and if the sheep don't want to talk they just walk away it, it's not a big deal yeah. but there's always the feeling of privacy you want to have the, your privacy and the Faroe Islands is not a tourist hub in the same way as Iceland has become yeah. and yeah. they have not um, in the same way decided to, to, to put a lot of emphasis on tourism it has come mm. over the past not just, it's it begun just before the pandemic, um, but they, they there's a lot. I won't say there's more bureaucracy in the Faroe Islands than there is in Iceland, but yeah. there are a lot of like you have to make these deals with the farmers. They need to set up some kind of way that ah. people can pay to go on the hikes and all those things. Mm. Whereas um, I know the government and visit Faroe Islands, they also try to take some initiatives. 
to make sure that the uh, trails are taken care of and so forth. Mm. The Faroe Islands was up until like 2015, 16, 17, a hiker location. Hikers came there to hike and it was free. They could just go on, on specific trails. But since the, the tourist boom, mm. they, they have had to take measurements to to yeah, yeah take care of the trails and so forth. Okay. Like probably on, on, on this day here, when we went here, you go up and it is a dirt trail and it becomes so muddy. Uh, so obviously they have to do something. So I'm I'm completely not against it. I'm not against that the farmers also get no. part part of uh, mm-hmm. uh, get some money for us walking on on, on the trails. Yeah, it the sounds a bit like what done in how Alaska. much you have to pay because some of the locations they they charge up, up towards like more than hundred dollars. For one, Ooh. and and Go even for me being in Denmark, I would say that's that's fairly steep price. Yeah, <laughs> that's steep indeed. Yeah, so so it, it's it's about finding this balance. Um, I had a, a photographer friend who lived in the Faroe Islands for for some years, uh, Thomas Vikra. Uh, he lives yeah. in Portugal now, but but he worked up there, and and he made sure that at least one of the locations, um, the the, the famous place to Trelanipa with the floating lake. Uh, perspective shot there that he made sure that they only charged like thirty dollars instead of sixty dollars that they wanted initially. So, yeah, it it's a, it's a push and pull always when tourism booms and starts, and they need to find a balance. And it yeah, it, it it's always like that. We we saw the same thing in Iceland, like so it yeah. also ex- exploded. So when you're talking about those prices, you're talking per per photographer or per group. Per photographer. Oh. Yep. Just, you hear the silence there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the art photography locations are not, you know, for tu- not tourism is in the case that, you know, for families, etc. They're really for serious photographers, aren't they? These mm. locations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's yep. um I, I don't know how it is with the locals. Like this specific place here, they've only just started charging for going mm. up here. Um and I haven't been there since they've started uh, the 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 charging. Uh, I don't know exactly how much they charge to go here, but it is a thing like, obviously, when I run the tours, those payments are going on to the, the photographers who yeah. join the tours. Yeah. Um, and and at the very least in Tralanipa, the, the guide goes for free. But mm. uh, the guide doesn't go for free on, on the very expensive one. Like, But it's no. always like, you know... Uh, yeah, you have you have to figure out uh, how how you deal with this business wise too, and obviously like you add this to the customer, and then you add that price on top, and that may deter someone from yeah. actually going. So yeah. you lose yeah. out on potential yeah. customers. So it's, yeah, it is what it is. Nice. Uh, that that kind of leads leads into the the question I was going to ask later on, but I may as well just ask just now. Is <clears throat> As, as you heard, my uh, channel is called Accessible Photography, and it's, it's really, it was really created in, in answers to yourself and various other photographers who go on these wonderful hikes and climbing hills and so forth for people who who, who aren't as mobile. They can't get out as much for, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really keen to go to the Faroes and, and see the place and photograph it, but I can't go climbing over fences and, and hiking for a fair distance to get to it. And I'm sure I'm, I'm positive. One of your videos, you said something about a four hour hike into a location. Now, I'm not sure if that meant a four hour return journey or actually a four hour hike in and four hours back. And that's something that is definitely never going to happen for me. So my question to you would be, you're, you're heading out to the Pharaoh as you've got a hard, hard car booked and everything, but you've, you've hurt your knee and you can't walk very far. Are you able to get photographs from the roadside, short walks? The doctor said you're allowed a short walk, but you're not allowed to climb any hills because you hurt your knee coming down again. <laughs> Is it worth you going or are you going to scrub the journey completely? I have actually considered making a non-hiking tour to the Faroe Islands. I will absolutely say yes. That yeah. said, the best viewpoints are, of course, at the end of the hikes, but you can definitely go to the Faroe Islands and still get amazing photos, even though you're just shooting from the road. Like the, 
the the most famous shot from the Faroe Islands, uh, the one with the mountain in the back and the waterfall in the front and the little village. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That one is is like two hundred meters just to walk. Like it's super easy. So so generally, yes, you can get plenty of really great photos from the Faroe Islands without hiking. But it is hiking that yeah. gets well, you the best. Obviously, yeah. it is. I mean, when, to be a proper landscape photographer, you've got to get out into the landscape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's absolutely, there's, there's no doubt about that. But there are those of us who it's just not going to be as feasible sort of thing. I mean, I, yeah. I can do it at times. Not always, but some of my my audience, they're not going to be able to, be able to do it at all. And they're no. quite, quite happy to do it from the roadside. So that, that's why I'm asking if it's, uh, people might want to visit, but be put off by, oh, you've got to climb up towards that lighthouse to get that view. You've got to, you've got to hike along there to get something. So yeah, it, it's very much days, a question about um, make, making sure that the expectations are met. So <laughs> like if I was setting up like a, a workshop uh, that was focused on non-hiking in the Faroe Islands, I wouldn't use a photo like this one here to promote it. <laughs> like oh, it's no. Yeah. no uh, I, and I would make, make very sure to show which one locations that you can actually photograph up there uh, from the road. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Great. Well, we'll move on to the next image, guys. And mm -hmm. this one is. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, the, the lighthouse that I was talking about. <laughs> that, that was that yeah. was exactly the photo I was talking about just before, yeah. like the, the the classic view. Same day, like there's five minutes between. I took these two photos, well, maybe less actually, maybe only two yeah. minutes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is a panorama, yeah. uh, probably uh -huh. like vertical, uh -huh. yeah. maybe six shots with the wide angle. The six ish, yeah. That yeah. that is exactly when when you introduced yourself earlier talking about the the the, the epic that wonderful word yes. again films of, of youth and so forth that we got and that is a that is a classic for that that is, that is the word that is, that is definitely thing. what you call epic isn't yeah. it yeah. it's beautiful it's, and it's yeah. the bird it's the bird as well yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's so funny with this photo here because we were literally packing up and suddenly i just saw that the clouds went into this formation right here and i was like oh my god do i have to get the camera out again we've just yeah. been here for two hours <laughs> uh, and so I, I got it out i just turned it up to like iso 1600 as far as i remember so i just yeah. hand hold it and I'll click 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 yeah. the bird yeah. was in there and boom nice. like but it, it's everything the gap in the clouds on the right hand side yeah. coming across to the birds and the gaps on the left it's yeah yes. it's just yeah it is she just sheer epic is it yeah yeah my eyes drawn to the backdrop right across there mm. um lovely just looking out you can just stare for a while won't you it's one of them images where your eyes are dotting all over the place yeah i was gonna Look, say that yeah it really is absolutely you want to you want to take it all in there's, you there's do, so yeah. much to look at mm, yeah yeah and it's like I mean I've seen so many of these pictures. Uh, this this of course I've seen with um, you know someone standing uh, on the actual top there, not the top, but pretty much halfway up where the lighthouse is, and given that grand scale of things, you know, amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a beautiful shot as well. Just uh, we were spoiled tonight, absolutely spoiled. <laughs> 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 Anyone else got the same thing to say? Um, but you, yeah. Doug, you've been quite quiet. Yeah. What have you got? To say yeah, I'm one? just thinking. I, I recognise the scene. I'm sure. Was Adam Gibbs with you on this particular trip, or was that no? I know Adam Gibbs have been here. I know he's been there, and he yeah. refused to walk up to the lighthouse because he was terrified of heights or something. I don't remember. Um, yeah. I I I remember a video. I think it was from Adam where Gavin Hartcastle was there. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he didn't want to go there. Uh, this specific <laughs> workshop, I th uh, as far as I remember, I did this one with Nick, Nick Page. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. yeah, I did see the, yeah. that video. I don't know if it was that one, but I think I did see that one. It was quite a, was it two or three videos you've done with Nick? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. this one yeah, here. Uh, what was I think it was just like moody photos from the Faroe Islands or something yeah, like that. It was, it's yeah. from the end of 2021. Yeah, that would be a while back. So I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah this love this. That's great. Uh, so we'll move to the next one, guys. Um, I think this one just you know, it's a you can't really too, say too much, it's, it's just epic. <laughs> That's six times. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm beside myself now. Uh that is amazing. Uh tell us more about this, Mads. It's just a, a cracking shot. The light is just phenomenal. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's actually also from from my my last Iceland trip. Uh, it was we got so many good photos on that on that week. Like it, it it's so unfair to workshop participants <laughs> that they have to to accept the weather that they get. Like, but this group here was so utterly utterly lucky. We got everything. Um, and here we 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 were in this area on a, on a clear day, and because it's like the end of November. So uh-huh. in Iceland, the sun doesn't go further than like seven degrees above the horizon. So you have golden hour the entire day. And more or less in the middle of the day, a little bit past uh, 12, maybe at one, uh, you get the sun lighting into this um, gorge. And mm-hmm. in the end of it, there's this waterfall that you can go up behind. It's just next to Skorafoss. Mm-hmm. It- this one here is called Kvartnofas, and it's uh-huh. become more known now. Uh, so they have like made a new trail in there, and they put up like uh, fences and and stuff. So you can't walk as much around in there as as you could before. Yeah. Uh, even though you technically it's not illegal to do it, um, mm, because yeah. there's free roaming in Iceland. Yeah. But uh, yeah. probably better to to just. F- follow the the yeah the, just respect to the respect, yeah, the respect there, it. Yeah. yeah but you yeah. can go up behind it oh. and uh yeah you uh, the camera is literally up against the wall here it's a uh-huh. wide angle photo and uh, and that makes sure to include like the the, the roof of the cave here and then uh-huh. just yeah. like i'm walking into the scene standing on that rock and if the wind is in the wrong direction, you just get like wet from the waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't standing there for long. No. Yeah. It's the, the golden, it's like golden light. It's like golden water coming down. It's, it's that kind of effect. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, have, have you actually emphasized the colors there in post or was it really like that? No, I haven't emphasized the colors, but obviously when you take a photo like this into the light uh, to preserve the the highlights or some of the highlights, then you need to to darken it down quite a lot. So I have upped the shadows a decent amount, uh, especially in the top uh, there. Even though it's lit by the sun, it is quite dark in the raw photos. Mm, mm, right. That was a lovely shot. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's get to the next one. Um, you know, just before we go to the next one, I'm look, looking at the uh, your, this is a portrait of yourself there. Uh, underneath the rock is. You know, I used to play a game called Subutio when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> they, you, know, you know where I'm coming from. You know, yeah. It reminds me of the little stopper bit underneath you used to kick the ball with. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's yeah, that's all yeah, perceiving yeah. things. <laughs> right. So nothing about me and Subutio. We'll get to the next one. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Mm, I so remember the video different. of this, yeah. and that was yeah. mental weather. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> mental. Yep. It was wet. Your other half was she not sat under a uh, like a, a hood? Like this, going, ah, was she not soaking wet? Sophie is just the best to travel with. Uh, <laughs> she she was taking care of our backpacks, my drone that I obviously oh. had, like everything was all <laughs> over the place. And then the rain came and she like packed everything up while I was standing out there and just yeah. getting soaked. Like even though I had my, my rain clothing on, like I just felt like how the rain came down my neck. It was, <laughs> uh, but I was so focused. I, I remember I, I saw the clouds and, and I saw that there was this gap here that would probably yeah. line up with the yeah. tree. So I got yeah. a few photos of that. I was very focused on that. Yeah, but yeah, this uh, this photo here is just, uh, yeah, it's so, such an iconic photo for me. I, I remember it vividly uh, taking that photo and my first time to the Lake District. Mm. Uh, it was just... Uh, yeah, I, I remember we just came, we basically just came from Wales and Snowdonia and we had been hiking the glitters twice. So we were just destroyed when we finally got to the Lake District. So I I knew I would probably return to the Lake District in the future, uh, as you have seen. Yeah. So we I, we only stayed two nights, as far as I remember, in the Lake District. And, and I just focused on everything that we could easily walk to. Yeah. Yeah. It's a drama in the shot. Love the clouds. Yeah, it's light. and yeah, obviously, I've, I've I've emphasized and darkened down the clouds a decent yeah. amount here. Yeah, so. really. But yeah, I, I I think this tree is basically gone by now or half. No, no, it's, st- it's still there. It's still there. It, it's still it's still like a twig. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's it's still hanging on there. 
still hanging on. That's good. <laughs> it's a good place to live. I'm, I'm, I've not been to that that down that way, guys, and I do not need to call down since I'm on the same island as you guys. Well, well, remember but, what know. Louise said earlier about uh, mass, mass, sorry, mass in, inspiring people to do things. Mm -hmm. I was watching one of these videos, if that, if not that one, and the next thing I did was actually go onto Google Maps and say, "How long is it going to take me to get there?" <laughs> <laughs> really fancy. But at this moment in time, I can't drive more than about twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit two and a half hour drive according to to Google. But later yeah. on in the year, maybe that will be something I can I can do again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about it's about two and a half hours for me. It's Buttermere. Yeah. You know. It's funny with Bottomir here because I, I've I've been to Bottomir twice and both times I have been absolutely <laughs> soaked by rain. Like yeah. the, it it was bad here, but when I returned with Nigel and James, like none of us had ever experienced what we experienced. It's in the end of my Lake yeah. District video. It's ridiculous. Like yeah. it was Dump like video. You're, you're all cuddled together, hiding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone Driving dumped a pool on <laughs> us, <laughs> and and the weirdest thing was that that there was so much wind, local wind in that system that hit us, and then four minutes later it came back and hit us from the other side. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I've never I've never experienced anything like that. It was good yeah. fun. <laughs> Almost lost the camera. <laughs> well, I've just looked it up. It's seven and a half hours from my house to get there because, Maz, I'm right on the south coast. So when you did Old Harry, oh. I was like celebrating because you're with an hour there. So when I see things like this, and these guys are always saying, "Oh, we've got some wonderful, wonderful places up here," I just, I, it's very flat where I am. So. I yeah, it's flat, but it's funny when when I come to England and and. I drive around there. Obviously, I see it with my Danish eyes. Yes, of I, course. I really enjoy Southern England. There's so many beautiful things to photograph there too. Like you, you pray, probably everybody knows. Like um, uh, Rachel, uh, what's her name? Tell about Tell about. Yeah, yeah. 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 And about. her seascape photography from, oh, yeah. from the south coast Absolutely. there, and Jack Lodge, like who's also yeah, living yeah. down there, yeah. and what he's photographing, like it, it's. I, I find that many Southern people, people from Southern England, maybe have the same sentiment as I had with Denmark, because mm -hmm. for me, Denmark was just like flat and boring. Mm. And it was just like not worth spending time on photographing. Mm -hmm. But when I finally like cracked the code and knew what to look for and actually got out and explored and found the potential and figured out like, okay, I can do a lot of woodland photography fog does happen as i know it does in england too mm -hmm. uh, so so it is it is just a question about having a little bit of patience and and waiting for the right conditions and, and also have explored i was gonna say and also i think that you kind of the, having local knowledge helps so i've i've just moved to the south downs national park oh, yeah. we've got those sweeping downs which are lovely but it's taken me about three years to finally Get my don't head. You have, um, don't you have like is is it called New Forest down there, which actually that, have yeah. a, a, a lot of like old trees in it, from what I've seen. And it's yeah, quite beautiful. Yes, but again, it, it's just sometimes having that local knowledge yeah. because when you go to the places where 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 a lot of people go, often that's not the places that are, that 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 where you'll reveal those secrets. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. That it, it's just... it's funny. After I moved to uh, to Zealand, so we have Jutland, the big peninsula in Denmark. That I'm from, literally right in the middle, and I've lived in Aarhus like most of my my twenties. Uh, and now that I've moved to Copenhagen, and I photograph mm -hmm. much more in Zealand, uh, and I live in Copenhagen, so I it's harder for me to get out of the town. It's why I always end up mm -hmm. in the deer park. It's quite big. But mm. I have explored most of it by now. Mm. Uh, but there's still mm. a lot of potential there. But but getting out into Zealand, actually driving around, even though there's only like maybe a little bit more than an hour, you can go anywhere <laughs> here. Mm. It, it's mm. it's still like I I have to go and and explore much more living here because I cannot use all the experience I've had from my childhood uh, with the forests in in Singapore where I've grown up. Uh, and and that area because I simply just not spent as much time on Zealand as I have in, mm. in Jutland. So, uh, but I think I try to emphasize it a little bit on my YouTube channel when I photograph in Denmark. Like the 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 biggest thing you can do 
to up your own landscape photography is to go and explore your local landscapes. Like it, mm, it yeah. is the single one most important thing you need to do and then just have patience until the conditions are good. <laughs> that that will yeah. make the biggest difference. Yeah, definitely. As uh, most of us here on this channel, uh, we all have our own good parts, our own back gardens, we call it, the best places to go to. Uh, me and Doug are like, I'm in Edinburgh, and it's a city, of course, so I have to travel about at least half an hour to get somewhere that's quite decent. Mm. Uh, but I do agree 100%, and it's making a day of it, you know, just get out there for a couple of hours, lose yourself, and enjoy mm -hmm. it, most importantly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get moved to the next image, guys. It's, uh, well, this is, yeah. uh, Love this. Number Love seven, it. epic. <laughs> that is a time blend, not a time blend, uh, an exposure blend, isn't it, of, of different... Um... Yeah, different exposure times, yeah. Thank you yeah, for translating exactly. my rubbish English there. <laughs> get the words <laughs> out. It, it, it's, exact, it's exactly the technique I talked about, like, yeah. uh, j just before with the waterfall. Fast shot off for the background waterfall and then uh, a slower shot of speed for the foreground, yeah. yeah. Uh, and again, also from my trip to Iceland back in November. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's not a whole lot more to, to talk about. It's score of us. It's probably the most photographed besides cellulans for us waterfall in all of iceland and it's just it's so iconic it's so so iconic so uh, you can feel yeah. the looking I, at that image yeah. you can feel the you can feel the force of the water yeah yeah you, yeah, you, you definitely it's yeah. good you've got a different angle from what people normally take of it though you know yeah, yeah. different take on it shall we say I walk out into the water here. Yeah. yeah. No, people don't always do that. I, I forgot my boots when I did that. So I was right on the edge trying to get some reflections in the in the water. Yeah. But what got me was the number of people that were up where that person is with the tripods out and so forth, taking images. And I'm like, yeah. what are you getting from there? Mm. You need to be mm. back a little bit to get the, the enormity of it. But everybody's different. Every, every photographer's different. So yeah. good on them. I, I, I have a few way. photos from like really really as close to it as i can get with like a 12 millimeter just photographing straight up in, yeah. into it you can yeah. definitely get like that that power that force of the waterfall to there and the but to get the, the the yeah. iconic shape of the waterfall yeah. you need to get a little bit back yeah. for sure yeah, i actually have a I, I made a video where i edit this photo in lumina uh, oh, I mean, yes i saw that yeah, yeah. If, mm -hmm. if you are interested in knowing how i edit these yeah. photos yeah, yeah, definitely. We will stick some links up as well uh, tonight, uh, because underneath the video rather as well, so people can actually click onto these links and also for the ebooks, which are very, inf very informative. I was so waiting for you to do the full on thing. I was like, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to ask about it in a little while, so we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens then. <laughs> I'm really, really, I'm really keen on some of the stuff you've got. Mm -hmm. Maz, one um, of the things I'm that I'm finding quite interesting um, that 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 you certainly I'm noticing more and mm -hmm. you sometimes you comment on it is when you're actually not too worried about the detail in the sky um yeah. and I think that that's that's something I'm trying to have the courage to do a little bit um and it's you know it's, sometimes I look back and just think oh god why didn't I do both just in case but it's, it's actually having the courage to do that I think sometimes when you're trying something new you kind of you almost have to have that that's um that comfort blanket of doing covering all the bases just in case yeah yeah uh, that's also one of the things i always say like when i go out and pho photographing of course i think composition and all that but all the technical stuff i always cover my butt i make sure that i focus tag it if need be i make sure i uh, capture the different exposures i need to, to cover the dynamic range um if it's a place with movement and water i make sure to get different shutter speed uh, versions also just so that I have it if I need it yeah. and mm -hmm. then I can always put it together and make sure yeah also get an exposure for the sky it's not yeah. always like this day because of the weather we just like had a flat gray uh, sky so in the editing phase I just added some glow to it uh, yeah. and that worked uh, in, yeah. instead of trying to like force out some grayness but yeah. because yeah. you cannot have glow and gray at the same time that doesn't make any sense lighting wise so yeah. generally i always try to like you know respect the light uh, yeah. when i edit my photos because yeah. else it the eye doesn't buy it if it looks unrealistic you can maybe not 
explain why it looks unrealistic, but there's something about it. And that usually takes away uh, for the viewer and especially other photographers uh, mm. who are used to watching photos. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do much in the way of dodging and burning then? Or um, that is? I don't do a whole lot of like the classic dodging and burning where you use the dodging and burning tools. Uh, I you I'm usually just super lazy mm -hmm. and make a, a gradient and then up the mm -hmm. whites instead. That's what I do. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Nice. Good. Next shot. Anybody else want to talk about this shot? No, I think it speaks for itself again. It's just that yeah, the scale, it. the, the scale of it again with that person in. It's just yeah. it's a, a typical mad shot. Epic. It is, yeah. It's your signature yeah. shot there, definitely. <laughs> well, let's uh, move on to the next one. You wait till you <sighs> see this one, chaps. Epic number seven, I think we're on. <laughs> possible shot, if you don't mind me saying that. Possible. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's just, just possible, yeah. All right, will do. Which makes it. <laughs> oh, yes, wow. this one here. Oh, what, what's to say, like, yeah. I've dreamt of this photo for years because I knew about this location. I knew that this here could happen. Uh the thing is, it's only an hour from where my parents live, but because I've moved to Copenhagen now, it, it takes three hours to get there, and I have to pay, obviously, for the for the bridge to get over there, too. So <laughs> it was a little bit harder. So I actually went, like, the week before uh, to really scout it out, and I had hoped that there was a chance of, uh, of getting some fog the morning after, but there was no chance of getting anything. So uh, I and had to wait a Heather. week. That is happened. Heather, isn't it? That purple. Yeah. Yes. Uh, am I seeing that? Yeah, yeah. Just. Yeah. yeah. So generally the Danish forests are lots of like uh, browse tree um, plantations. But uh -huh. sometimes we have these we have these areas, uh, I think you call them moors probably yeah. in, in England. Yeah. Yeah. Where we have like, it's it's... I don't know the exact English express uh, of the yeah words for it, but the the ground is like sour and it's more sandy, and that's where the heather grows, and yes. like yep. two thirds, if not more, of Jutland was like that only oh, yeah. maybe two three hundred years ago. Uh, there are only very few places left where you you can you can see that this year is one of one of them. Uh, and then there's like more open areas, also other places, and and they have put up these um, these pine trees in it too. And it's it's hilly. It's quite it's it's not a typical Danish landscape because it is quite like dynamic with smaller hills, and there's a lot of small hills. And as you can see, like they are in line and and all yeah. that stuff. And then the trees are more spread out, so the fog can actually get down into it. Yeah. Rather than just stay on top of the forests, I've experienced a lot when it's foggy outside, and I want to photograph in a forest, especially when there's leaves on the trees, that the fog yeah. actually doesn't go down into the forests. Uh, and and here it's just like open space, so having the trees stand out there, and then it's taken with a drone because we, yes. we don't have a whole lot of like you know vantage points. So uh, I had to use the drone yeah. to get this one here. So is that the same morning as the one afterwards where you've got the sun coming through? Uh, sorry, that, that requires you seeing the next one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah, sorry. I'll hang on for that comment. Yeah. <laughs> go quiet when we go on to the next one because I'll go, and is that the same morning? Could be. Yeah. Let's, yeah, uh, let, else got... let's, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go to the next one then. So same, is that the same, same morning? morning that... <laughs> yeah. Same morning, same place. Yeah, yeah. Just, this is lovely. What, is this what a difference half an yeah, hour yeah. makes? It's just it's it, stunning. stunning. It's minutes apart uh, with the sun coming up there uh, oh, compared yeah. to to the other one just before. Maybe I've had the drone back and changed the battery, but yeah, yeah it's very yeah. close mm -hmm. to each other. Like it's it's one of my favorite videos from last year. Like yeah. that was where like you you see my full face happiness when yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. The way I get your face uh, is all, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and also nice. that that sun just picks out and uh, really picks out the purples in the foreground yeah. in that one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you say about your face, Madge, your face is is incredibly expressive. Mm -hmm. I think it's partly what takes the viewer on that journey because when you have joy, man, do we yeah. have joy as well? Oh, that's good mm -hmm. to hear. <laughs> and I, remember, I just, yeah, yeah, this is proper photo envy of this location. Me yeah. and Dan were talking about it tonight before we go on. It says the, the word is infectious. Uh, yes, yeah. 
it's funny because I I over the years, obviously I can like objectively see that my photos are decently well. It's a big part of like the Nordic and Scandinavian culture, not to like talk too well about yourself. Um mm-hmm. so if you don't when I go into a place like this, I'm always like surprised that, whoa, am I able to actually do this? <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> because even though I have some ideas about what I want, the, the concept of what I want, when it actually then happens, I get this combination of, whoa, it actually happened. And yeah. whoa, can I actually capture this? Like, yeah. and, and, mm-hmm. and when your pre-visualization and your patience and, and, and your scouting, all your work comes together and you actually get what you want. It it's yeah. It, That's beautiful. You cannot not smile, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, but it's just the warm tones and the cool tones, everything yeah. that cool. the ray is coming through as well. That fog. It's, well, yes, it takes, uh, it takes you on a journey all the way through. I was going to say, it, and the journey carries on on the next one. I'm, listen, I'm not going to lie, Matt. I've got them in front of me, and I'm literally yeah. flicking backwards and forwards because I'm seeing connections yeah. here. I'm yeah. seeing the yeah. story going through as we go here. And yeah, because, same morning uh, again. Like yeah, it, 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 just it is probably one of my favorite videos I've ever made on my channel, especially mm. from Denmark. So yeah. Mm. It's yeah, one of the one videos is... that, that I actually watch myself from time to time, just like to get inspired. Yeah. Is that how you get <laughs> such good numbers? You sit there and watch yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's just on repeat, you know. Nice, nice. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I think I'll do that tonight. I'll put things in a loop. <laughs> <week. laughs> Still wouldn't yeah. make any difference. <laughs> So yeah, what the, it, the, the drone is basically the, the, yeah. the same place as the other one. It it's just mm. turned like maybe sixty or seventy degrees uh, more the towards the sun. Um, yeah, the the, 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 the trees that you just saw in the previous photos is just like to the right here. Yeah, uh, and this here is just another area. And and luckily, it's funny with this area here because it's actually very close to an airport, uh, to Bilon Airport. Uh, but it's just outside the drone zone, so I'm like, yes. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's and, uh, let's move to the next one. We're actually, there's um, this, is so the this is the wow. last one. Wow. Oh, this is just. This is a cherry on a cake. Yeah, that's incredible. When yeah. I watched your video from here, Mass, the, the thing what came to me, was well, you've got all the colours fantastic, but how hot is it still when you sat there taking that image? <laughs> <laughs> it's it it's not like you know hot hot but you can definitely uh, we were a little bit further from the volcano here than compared to the 2022 volcano but it is like sitting in front of a, a, an open fireplace yeah and mm. and it, it it's a oddly otherworldly out of body experience actually yeah. being there it's um we have all seen footage of lava on film on video we have seen photos of it but the millisecond you see it for yourself with your own eyes your jaw just drops because yeah seeing lava is it just does not translate in photos and on video properly yeah. because it's so glowy when you're there it's just like this yeah. goo that, that just lights up and and i remember i remember because that was the feeling I had myself, and I just so enjoyed watching uh, Sophia's face when she saw it for the first time because she had the same like, yeah, yeah, we'll go see the volcano, whatever. Like, and then you see it, and it just blows your mind. <laughs> um, and and this night or this day here, I spent with uh, Sophia and uh, and Nigel and some other photographers. It, it it's just fantastic, and one of my main goals was just to get a, a selfie with with me and Sophie in yeah. in my way of photographing, and then with uh-huh. the drone out there uh, and, yeah. and and getting the shot, and it was a bitch to edit. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. The, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, the the um, I I shot it with the new DJI Mavic Three Pro with a seven time zoom, mm-hmm. and the 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 camera when you look at it it looks like an old mobile phone it it's not very good yet the sensor it it's just not compared to yeah. the three times zoom and the main camera uh, and then when you edit and and photograph during night and mm. you have to make several exposures to both capture the lava but also get a little bit of details in the darkness mm. 
and you had have to noise reduce it afterwards and because of all the noise it get miscolored so you have to change the colors back to something that is actually more uh, right. more realistic and yeah. you have to figure out what makes sense in regard to how red can the smoke actually be because it's like very tomato red but it was kind of how it was mm -hmm. so yeah. you have to like edit it in a realistic way emphasize yeah you, you yeah and emphasize what is realistic what the eye buys and then i had to get help from uh, sophie to actually look at where some spots that I didn't detect because I'm a little bit colorblind. So some of it I didn't detect that there was like maybe some science here or some some greens there that I had to get out of the photo too. So this photo here is highly, highly edited, but hopefully in a way where it looks realistic. Yeah, it does definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. What I'd say to the viewers as well, if, if you haven't seen Massey's video on this, mm -hmm. it, this is got to be one of the most inspiring videos where it takes you on the journey looking at it. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, it, 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 that is down also with... one of my favorite photos, uh, favorite videos I've ever made. It's like 40 minutes from Iceland with just me generally photographing new locations that I've never been to before, including the volcano here. Like, And yeah, guys, yeah. we will put the, a link to Maz, Maz's um, videos on the YouTube channel. I'm sure most of you are probably subscribed to him, but if you haven't, if you've been living under a rock, that please and check them out it'll take your photography to a new level it's, it's absolutely stunning some of the images and these journeys of course as well is really captivating so yeah it's just a great image to end on tonight it's, it's amazing it's got everything um the Thank just you. the you talk about the light um you know you say you know the a camera wouldn't give it justice or you know a drone or a video I mean, how bright is that? Is it just like luminous bright, pretty much in your face? It, it's it's luminous bright. It's not like it's blinding yeah. you, but 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 it is like it's it's really hard to put into words. Uh, it's just mm. something like you've never seen, unless you've seen lava. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, yeah, it's uh, you you can look at it and yeah, you can see it glows compared to like the surroundings here, but but it's 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 different. <laughs> it's just different. And it's in regard to the photography aspect, it's one of the epic, epic things to photograph because lava, it's like, you know, the beginning of Earth, you know, that's what it is really. And yeah. it's to get that in frame, just to even to capture, is just amazing. And the question, get the question that, I was know. going to ask is, Maz, what is your most memorable image? But I think you've just, just said it with this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this year is definitely up there for sure. Uh, if, if, I, if I have to like point to my favorite favorite photos it's one i've captured from denmark um mm -hmm. it's with the uh, like the morning fog lifting out of the golden hour and there's like a, a group of birds flying underneath a couple of trees coming out and there's like shadows going down through those trees yeah, um, yeah. it's one of the first photos in 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 my danish portfolio yeah on, i think i know which image you're on about there yeah, yeah. i think okay, that we'll that one is probably the photo i'm the most proud of because being there and photographing it reminded me of a photo I've seen from uh, Victoria Haag from Alaska. And I managed to oh. capture that 25 minutes from my hometown in boring Denmark. I was blown away. And I was just trying to like get one of the birds on the lake to just like go in there. And then this pack of birds, I see it out on, on, on the right side. And I knew I had it on two second timer. And I wasn't sure about the shutter speed. So I just had to like, put it away from the two second timer. And instead of putting on a fast continuous shooting, I just put it on a single frame. And I'm like, no, no, I put it on the wrong one. And I just had to like, just grab the photo once the bird was there. And I absolutely nailed the shot. Oh, so, <laughs> like, so that one was one of those where like all my experience and I had to like have my excitement down yeah. and, and, and just try to like nail it because I had one chance you can like see in the raw photos uh, on my computer that there is only that one photo of the birds. <laughs> <laughs> You're just getting it right. That's the main thing in it. Once you've got it, that's great. We'll just actually get back to the interview screen, guys. And this is going to... So Mass has got a couple of ebooks going on just now. Uh, Landscape Composition 1 and 2. And he also does tutorials, uh, post-processing uh, videos. There's 30 videos all in all. Make sure you check these out, links below this video, and enjoy the rest of the show.
There we go. So yeah, you're on that. screen. Yeah, it's yeah been Mass, on. I wanted to ask something. Mm -hmm. I I've been mulling over. I've been mulling over doing some courses and some. Um, well, maybe is it learning more about processing my photographs? Because I don't think I'm doing it very well. And I don't know if I, I, I seem to remember you advertising some course on one of your uh, one of your videos. <laughs> Quite <Yeah. often. laughs> uh, I want to ask the second part of the question is, will it be good for me learning for almost from scratch because I, I don't use Photoshop. I tend to use Lightroom a lot. I don't use Photoshop, and I want to be able to learn more about it and, and move on. You got you're saying you've got something like thirty videos in there, mm -hmm. and as as people who create videos, we know how much goes into that. And I thought I would give you the opportunity just now just to let people know how much has gone into that in the first place, and then how. What sort, of, what sort of benefit is that going to be for the likes of myself to try and improve my images? Okay. Um, so obviously taking the photos first in the first place that I actually edited in the course. Uh, and it took me uh, definitely the better part of half a year to actually make all the videos, put them together. Um, like obviously they're not working on it like 24 seven, but it, it's, uh, it took me a long time. Um, and yeah, in regard to the price and all that, like I, I talked with Nigel quite a lot about it because he was making his masterclass at the same time, and the 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 price for usually like one course uh, or one tutorial that I usually bought from uh, either Ted Go or Ryan Dyer or some of the other photographers, it's sixty nine dollars for one mm. video. And I knew yeah. that if I was to charge more, I needed to, to have a lot of like value in that course. So I included like 10 start to finish tutorials. So those alone, those 10 videos should market price be worth like $700. Wow. Um, and then I've included like all the different sections, tool sections, yeah. where I like go into showing how to do different things, either in camera raw, which is the same as Lightroom, or in Photoshop, how to dodge and burn, clean your photos, and all those things. So it's it's con it's I structured it so you should be it should be fairly easy to jump back and forward in that section. And then I have the intro section, which is just about how I go into the programs, talk about the programs, teach the programs, and how to use them. But if you're using Lightroom, you there's no reason for you to use Camera Raw. You just use Lightroom and then jump into Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. That, but a lot of the editing I do is happening in Camera Raw. Mm -hmm. So that is Lightroom. Yeah, cool. that's right. It's exactly cool. the same. Uh, yeah, and we'll actually put some links to that just now, guys, on the screen. And uh, yeah, we'll check out, go down underneath this video and immediately you can get in, uh, actually uh, right to the direct link. You can actually purchase one of these uh, courses. I'm sure you'll uh, you enjoy uh, and also taking the time to learn uh, some really insightful information. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, guys, um, any other questions at all from us? Uh, yeah, so I've all been kind of, yeah, kind I've of got, I've got taken one. back by these images. <laughs> <laughs> What's it, Master Antarctic? Of video productions coming out now this week, mm -hmm. how hard is it to shoot from a, a rib? Costume how hard question? is it to sorry to shoot from one of them rib boats? It, because... It's not hard. You just take your camera and and, and press. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you've got you, on your latest on your latest video, you've got that whale tail coming out yeah. of the ocean there with all that backdrop. That's just yeah. That's yeah, thing, I was that that to bring that one up. Fantastic. That image is absolutely stunning with the tail. Yeah. The just just the tail, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's yeah. unbelievable. He, he, here's, a, here's a secret that I didn't say in the video. It's actually slightly out of focus. <laughs> oh, so the, the the thing that happened in in that one is that this is uh, it, it was our first outing on the Zodiac, mm -hmm. and it was so heavily snowing everybody was struggling with autofocus because you kind of have to use autofocus when you're photographing wildlife uh, if you really want to nail that focus. And mine is just like, yeah, it captured the snow just in front of the whale. Um, and and it was just really hard to figure out how, yeah. how those, those those things worked. Generally, um, it 
photographing wildlife from what I've learned now, I've been both to Svalbard and now Antarctica and the focus on photographing whales or polar bears or walruses or, or whatever. It's a completely different mindset to, <laughs> to being a landscape photographer, <laughs> completely different. Yeah. You have to be so much faster. And I consider myself quite a fast landscape photographer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but here you just have to be so much faster because you get one, maybe two chances. You need to use a high continuous uh, shooting. You have need to have really good autofocus. You need to have, you're much more gear dependent as a wildlife photographer than you are as yeah. a landscape photographer. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to deal with like, how do you deal with falling snow? How do you deal with the uh, Zodiac that jumps around? <laughs> like, yeah. how do you hold your camera? Like, there's so many other things that you need to take into consideration. And it takes a little bit of like time to get into that mode of photographing and just know that birds and whales and Arctic foxes and whatever move very fast, which means that you need to have the very fast shutter speed, probably yeah. at least yeah. one thousandth of a second, at least. And that means that you either have to open up your aperture completely or you need to like really bump up the ISO. Yeah. Um, Did you have it luckily with the newer cameras, like... Yeah. Whether it's the like Canon R5 or Sony A7R, three, four, five, or like Nikon Z7 or eight, we can usually bump the ISO quite yeah. up uh, and clean it up afterwards. Yeah, 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 definitely. And it's uh, some good, uh, good chat tonight. I mean, I enjoyed it. We've um, we've touched on quite a lot. The images just, um, I'm I'm completely in awe with these images tonight. As when just going through when you talk through these images, as I mean, there's narrative to them. It just gives you a whole different dimension to the image, uh, so I've really enjoyed that tonight. I'm sure the the guys watching this tonight as well have enjoyed them. And sure. yeah, Maz, uh, we really do appreciate you coming on tonight, and it's been a great. Thank you so much for having to me. get you on here as well. Just to just to say thank you for that as well. Uh, that was a really really nice thing you did to come onto our channel. We were quite a new channel. We're um, yeah, we're going the right direction. We like to think, and people <laughs> like yourself helps us. Cool. Thank you, Phil. Even awesome. if we do do a lot of cheese. Well, yeah, there's a bit of cheese now and again. Yeah, we've got to have a bit of cheese. I think if you get too bit serious, it gets a bit boring. You know, it's have to get a bit of cheese. You know, I I hope I I, I have contributed to uh, not to the to cheese, no, but to <laughs> you know, to a epic, bit of yes. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Maz. It's been Thank great. You. Yeah. Yes, thanks indeed. So, guys, thanks again for watching another Landscape Lenscast podcast, and thanks again for staying around and watching this channel. Um, I'm sure you've enjoyed the images as much as I have. And I'm sure you've uh, enjoyed the chat as well with uh, Maz. Uh, and just want to say thank you for Maz to come on to the, the actual podcast itself. Uh, Maz, can I ask you a question? Of course. Um, not so much in the now, but in the, maybe in the, in the near future, would you like to come back on for a little, little kind of chat again with us? Sure. Great. Uh, I don't know what kind of capacity it'll be in, but we'll, be, we'll get you on just for a, maybe a photo critique or something like that. Just for the photography community, as we say um, but that would be great if you could and thank you and uh, of course Darren Ginger Captures not Ginger Productions that's Chris <laughs> Evans sorry there's a French here that and of course uh, Dougie Doug Mellon 123 Click <laughs> that's, that's his catchphrase believe me so. <laughs> and Louise welcome as ever to come on thank you Louise coming on and of course Alistair Accessible Photography always good to have you on as well and right, until then we we'll see you again as we see in Scotland, cheery bye. And as we see in England, goodbye. <laughs> Take care. Goodbye. So. <laughs> <laughs>